Hi, welcome to Oak Haven. I'm Jim Varick. My wife Julie and I were walking around the property today uh, collecting or weeding garlic mustard and uh, we were thinking about garlic mustard and a lot of people will forage garlic mustard because it has a, a garlicky onion uh, flavor and they'll add it to their food. Um, I personally don't think it tastes very good. Uh, if I'm going to put onion or garlic in my food foraged from the property, what I will forage is more likely this. So down here uh, I grew up in, in northern Illinois, and in the northern part of the country, uh, we would call this wild leek. In the southern part of the country, uh, they call it ramps. Very popular foraging uh, item in the Appalachian Mountains and in the south. Uh, there's festivals, things like that, that uh, focus on, on ramps. Ramps have an onion uh, to a, a, a garlic flavor to them. Uh, these, there's, there's debate as to whether or not there's one species or two species of ramps. Uh, what we have here is the white ramps, because as you see on the stems here, the, uh, it's, it's kind of green or white rather than uh, there's a reddish ramp that uh, has a reddish stem. Uh, some people say that's one uh, different species. Some people say that it's just a different variety of the same species. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to harvest some of these. We're going to try to do it in a sustainable way. We're actually in, by in a sustainable way, uh, we have a lot of ramps here, so I'm just going to take a few from this patch and then let it fill in. Some people feel like that's not very sustainable because when you dig up the bulb, uh, you actually kill the plant, and that it's more sustainable just to cut off the, the leaves uh, and then use the leaves in, in cooking. We've done that before where we'll cut up the leaves, dice them up in eggs. It's very good, adds a little bit of a, almost a chive-like flavor to it. Um, what we're gonna do today though is actually dig up the whole bulb and show you the, the whole process. Um, this is private property, so uh, we don't have any issue with that. Again, we've got plenty of ramps. I'm not worried about uh, depleting the, the ramp population. Um, if it's public property, some public property allow, uh, property allow uh, properties allow you to, to forage on them, um, some don't. So the Native Americans in Illinois uh, would call this plant Chicago. Uh, so there's an area in, on the, uh, the southern shore of Lake Michigan that's named after these plants where it used to be very prevalent uh, called Chicago, but we pronounce it Chicago, uh, although I doubt if there's many ramps that grow within the city limits of Chicago anymore. So we're gonna dig some of these up. Uh, the idea is you want to dig it up in a way that disturbs the ground around it as little as possible. So I try to use a, a narrow trowel, just come in. We've had a lot of rain, so it's kind of muddy ground here. Um, but break it up a little bit, and then we'll... There, you can hear it kind of breaking loose. Pop it up, let them come back down again, and then fill that in again. So you can see this beautiful bulbs. We've got two plants here, and then the, the feeder roots at the bottom. So normally we would leave the feeder roots, uh, just bring the, the bulb and the leaves in, wash them up for eating. So this is just starting to send up its, its flowering stalk. This is late in the season for, for harvesting ramps, but the flowering stalk will be about you know, eight, ten inches tall, something like that, um, with a, a ball of white flowers on the top. The flowers will produce a, a small BB-like black seed, um, so you'll have this, this clump of black seeds up at the top. The, uh, the leaves will die back. You can see they're starting to die back now. They're turning yellow. Um, the leaves, uh, like a lot of spring ephemerals, it produces the leaves in the spring before the leaves start to fill out, and right now the, the canopy is starting to fill in, uh, so it's decreasing the amount of sunlight that gets to the forest floor. When there's not much sunlight that gets to the forest floor, it's not very efficient for these plants to be have this big wide leaf that's transpiring um, uh, water and such. So the leaves will die back, the flowers will come back, and for the rest of the summer you'll see just the, the flowering stalk or the seeding stalk. Now the, the bulb is still there, so if you wanted to forage, forage ramps later on in the season, you could find that, that uh, seeding stalk or that seed stalk uh, and dig up the bulbs, uh, it would still be there. Uh, ramps are pretty unique in how they look. They're, they're, a, they're a monocot, so the, the veins are parallel um, on each leaf. You can see that 
The leaves all come from one location in the ground. There's no central stem. Um, there are a few things that look a little like ramps that you should be aware of. Trout lily, this is a white trout lily. Um, the difference with trout lily, again, it's the end of the, end of the season, so it's hard to, to tell, but trout lily has a mottled leaf. Uh, the, the ones that produce a, um, a flower and fruit have two leaves, never more. Um, most of them in a patch will only have one leaf. And again, the ramps have multiple leaves, all coming from that big bulb. Virginia bluebells, which have large strap-shaped leaves like that. Virginia bluebells are a dicot, so you'll see that the, the veins on the leaf, they come out in what's called um, a pinnate fashion, where there's one central stalk and then they come out and then alternate out like that, <clears throat> as opposed to um, monocots, which ramps are, which um, all of the veins of the leaves are parallel. Now, there is a plant, a garden plant, that could be confused for ramps, I guess, um, that is a dicot. I mean, it is a monocot. Um, so it has parallel venation. Okay, the, the veins come out and they all run parallel to each other out to the tip. <clears throat> this is lilies of the valley. Okay, so lilies of the valley, I mean, here it is with its cute little flower, but it doesn't always have that. So the problem with lilies of the valley, um, it, it's, it's mostly found uh, in cultivated states, but um, you can also find it um, growing wild if it, uh, if it was cultivated at one point. But lilies of the valley is definitely poisonous. So you would want to avoid that um, if, it, uh, if it came to that. Now here, <clears throat> we're looking at our, our shade garden, and I had to share with you this one thing. Here is garlic mustard growing up in the middle of our shade garden. Um, shame on us. Another thing that we thought might look a little like ramps uh, when you're looking on the forest floor, and it definitely is found in the same types of areas, is Solomon seal. There's various uh, species of Solomon seal, but all of them are the same, have the same characteristics. Um, so they also are a monocot, so they're going to have the strap-shaped leaves with the um, parallel veins, but they have a central stem with leaves coming off from the central stem. The uh, ramps have all of the stems coming up uh, from the bottom, um, so they do look very different. So anyway, that was ramps. We're going to go in. We're going to uh, prepare these for breakfast. Um, maybe we'll show some, some uh, clips or some still shots of what we've done. Um, other than that, thanks for uh, being with us and uh, uh, sharing some of our woods with us and sharing ramps with us. Um, if you like what you see, if you want to see more of what we're doing, uh, please subscribe. It means a lot to us. It lets us know that there's people listening and uh, that uh, uh, you're as interested in finding out about nature as we are. So thank you very much.